In today's video, we're going to look at how we can use root motion animations in Sequencer. So what is the difference between a root motion animation and an animation with no root motion? In essence, if we look at two animations, so this is the run forward and this is a root motion animation. So as you can see, the root bone is moving. So if you go to your show, go to character bones, you can select all the hierarchy or just a bone and it will show up. And on the animation, you can choose whether to show root motion or not. You need to turn off some of these in, in order for it to show. But as you can see, this is the root bone that is being animated. And essentially in root motion animations, the motion of the character is based on the animation of the root bone as opposed to this type of animation where the character is stationary and then we have to move the, move the character or the root bone in order to simulate the actual movement. And as you can see, there is no red movement here on the root bone on that animation. And this animation does have it. So this tells us that there is root motion in the animation. The advantage of using root motion animation is that the movement of the character is synchronized with the animation, so we don't have to physically move it, as opposed to this non-root motion animation where we would have to move it and hope that our movement synchronize with the, with the, movement, of the movement of the character's body and legs, etc. So how do we create a root motion animation using Sequencer? Well, if you go back to our level and there's just a third person character with no changes on it, running its default animation blueprint. So to use this in a level sequence, let's create our first one. So if we go here, say add level sequence, and we'll just call this level sequence root motion. Save that. And that will open up. Now we can add our character. So the actor to sequence will choose our third person character. In order to, for this to work, we'll need to turn off the control rig, otherwise that will prevent things. So if you just press on this icon there, that will turn off the control rig. And now we can start adding some animations. So if we want this character to start here and then to run across first thing we'll do is we'll click on that, say animation, we'll say MM, we'll use the run forward animation, which we just looked at, which has root motion in it. And now if we just play this, we can see the character is moving by itself. But say we want him to move even further. Well, we could just add another animation here. We can just say MM run forward again. But look what happens. He snaps back, so he runs from here. And then when he has to carry on running, he snaps back. And to see what's happening, if we right click and say show skeleton, and on here we say show skeleton, what we notice is that, so to begin with the skeleton is here. And as you can see, it's moving across, but then it snaps back to the original position. And that's often an issue with root motion. Now there's two things. What we want to do is we want this to just carry on running. So if you click on the second animation and you go to match with this bone in previous clip, we can probably choose one of the feet. So if I say, foot and we say foot left we might end up with this strange kind of a 
result. And there are probably two reasons for that. One is we want to make sure that we're matching right at the start. So if you go to the end of one and press the period key, it should bring you to the end here. So now if you right click and say match and now type in foot, foot left. He's going straight instead of off at an angle, which is correct. The other thing is when you look at your character, he's running this animation blueprint. In order for this root motion to work, sometimes you need to actually change that to using a custom mode. So you can do that in the actual sequencer itself. So if we go here and we right click on here, go to properties and say force custom mode. And on this, again, we say properties force custom mode. And now if we do this, he should carry on walking. There's a bit of a snap here, and that's just because of the blend issue. So if you move that across slightly, that should hopefully deal with that. So now he He runs to the first place and then he carries on with the skeleton running to the next place. So we could add another animation to the end of that sequence. So again, this is a, a retargeted animation. And as you can see with the that red movement there, there is some root bone motion in it. So let's see how easy it is to add this. So if we go back here to the animation, click on the if we just come to the end of this one, click on the animation here, and if we say it's called cast two, so he comes across, then he snaps back to play the that animation. So we need to match it at the right location. So tick there match with this bone. Again, we'll choose the foot left. He still snaps back. So again, we need to probably change the properties to force custom mode. And we need to make sure we're forcing it at the right point because otherwise you notice he was still snapping. So from this point here, right at the start, we'll force custom mode. Again, there's again, there's a slight snap there, and that's just because these two are, they just need to blend a bit better. So move that here. And if we play that from the start, so he runs across, runs across, and then plays another root animation at the end. So say we wanted to just add a non-root motion animation to the end of this. Now we saw this jog forward has got no root animation. So I've just retargeted that by sort of going across retarget animations to, to our mannequin. So again, it's got no root motion. And say we wanted to just play this at the end so if we go back to our level sequence, and it's important when you start adding these that you add it under the same, either the character or the character mesh and not split them. I go to animation and I click and I say jog forward retargeted. So I put that at the end. As you can see, that seems to, even with the skeleton, if we show it, that seems to work straight out of the box. So because it's got no root motion, we don't need to match any bones. So there's no bone matching. And we don't actually need to change the force custom mode here like we do on the root motion animations. 
and the skeleton will will show up as well. So our full animation now looks like this. So that's our final animation. Seems to be working okay. Now there are some gotchas with these sequences. Sometimes they can be a bit temperamental where it's working one moment and then not working the next. So the best thing is often just to close it and to reopen it to see if it corrects itself. The other thing to remember about is that this bone matching like we do here in order to make sure that the root motion animations are, are sort of following on from each other. If you look in the properties, you can come down here and you can see there is a match location offset. So this is how Sequencer is matching the location offsets based on the bone. Sometimes this just doesn't work and you do have an option to set your own location offset. So you could just as easily put these numbers into here and not have to use the matched bone approach. So that's worth knowing because for some reason certain animations might just not match the bones the way you expect them to. The same you can do with the rotation offset. Um, as I said, in order for it to run on the character and even sometimes on a skeletal mesh, you do need to force custom mode here or change the blueprint details from use animation blueprint to use custom mode. If you don't want the the sequence to snap back at the end so it just stays where it is when it finishes what you need to do is just select each of these right click go to properties and when it says when finished change it from project default to keep state and then it will remain here instead of snapping back. And the other thing that you can do is you can obviously just create a linked animation sequence so you can bake this out to a sequence. And if we just put that in sequencer just call SK mannequin sequence keep everything as it is, we can export it and this is our sequence. As you can see there's a root motion with that root bone moving and then it snaps back at the end and we can then use that in our blueprint as we need. So I hope this shows you how to use root motion animations in your sequencer, how to match the bones, how to sort out some gotchas like making sure it's a custom mode, um, how you can keep the state at the end and how you can export the sequence to use in your character.